Welcome to Exact Training. This lesson is on the Inventory Control Module and creating cycle count transactions. So why do we do cycle counts? It helps us maintain inventory accuracy through regular cycle counting. A good cycle counting program can negate the need for physical inventories. The easiest way to enter beginning on-hand inventory balances is to cycle count the existing stock and enter it into the system using the cycle count transaction. Begin here in the System Manager and select the Materials tab. And choose the Inventory Control Module. From there, choose the Activity menu and select Transactions. The Transaction window appears. This lesson is on using the Cycle Count tab, so choose that one. In the Transaction window, there are three main panes. The upper left has the Transaction tabs, the upper right has the part's stock information, and the lower pane is a grid that we will use to display the parts that are part of the query. Before we dive into the module itself, there are some default settings that you should know about. You can see these by clicking on the Options menu, then on Preferences. These preferences are user-specific. In the Preferences window, you can decide which items to appear on certain screens or reports. If Display Costs is marked, the Cost Unit field displays on all Transaction tabs except the Transfer tab. Also, Unit Cost and Extended Cost columns display on the Transaction grid. When Display Due Quantities is marked, the Balance Due field displays on Selected Transactions tabs. Also, the values displayed in the Transaction Grid Quantities column after a query, match the value displayed in the Balance Due field for each order. When Display Due Quantities is not marked, the Balance Due field does not display on the Selected Transaction tab. A zero value displays in the Transaction Grid Quantities columns for all line items after a query. To display on-hand quantities on the Cycle Count tab, Mark the checkbox next to Display on Hand Quantities in the Cycle Count box. So if you want one of these items to appear, you will need to place a check mark in this window. Let's take a look at the results of configuring these settings. We will go ahead and place a check mark in each item. Once the checks have been placed, click OK. Then close the transaction window and reopen it so the window can refresh with your new choices. Now back on the Cycle Count tab, you can see the effect of our adding those check marks. These fields were not appearing before. They are showing now because of the check marks we added to the Preferences window. In the lower portion of the window, the Transaction Grid, there are now columns for the cost information. Now let's talk about cycle counting. Cycle counting allows you to verify inventory accuracy constantly by counting the on-hand inventory of a few parts at a time and comparing the counts with max inventory balances. Max tracks all cycle counts that are performed and their accuracy level and prompts for cycle counts that need to be done. Cycle count prompts are based on part information entered by Max users on the Part Master Inventory tab. For more information, see the lesson on the Part Master Inventory tab. When you are finished updating the Cycle Count Transactions, you may close this window. Select the Activity menu and choose Exit. And you will be returned to the System Manager window.